Good morning, Digit fam, and hey, it's me, Adam Dowd, your old buddy, your old pal, old reliable me, showing up just like I do every day to have a fireside chat with you about the things you love and the things I love. So pull up a chair and let's get this love fest underway before I start to make it sound creepy. It is April 25th, 2019, and this is your Digit Daily. So, you might have heard of this thing, it's called the internet. Turns out, unlike the pet rock and platform shoes, this thing is for reals and people are, you know, using it. And one company who's pretty tapped into the internet is Mozilla. You may have heard of them, they make a browser that people used to use before Chrome came out. Yeah, yeah, I know Firefox diehards, people still use it, calm down. But Mozilla's position in the internet marketplace makes it uniquely qualified to take a step back and look around at what's working on the internet and most importantly, what's not working. So Mozilla has taken it upon itself to release an internet health report each of the last three years and wouldn't you know it, this year's just came out. The report is an overall look at some of the biggest issues facing the internet and people's use of it. And we're not talking about kids playing too much Fortnite, but more like a barometer of where people are in terms of technology that we have today. Like AI, we have too much of it. Privacy, we don't have enough of it. Censorship, I'm not allowed to say how I feel about that. And more. It's very long and very far-reaching, which it has to be because so is the internet. The report is 82 pages and for some reason written in two columns, which I'll be honest is annoying AF, but then sometimes so is the internet. But Tristan, God bless his soul, has taken it upon himself to pull a few nuggets out of there that are worth reading. First up, and this one's a little personal for me because my family's actually done this, this is the 23 reasons why you should not spit into a cup to learn your heritage. And I guess this makes sense in the long run, but we really didn't think about it at the time. Once your DNA is out there, it's not coming back. And do we really honestly know what they'll do with your DNA? I mean, oh sure, there's you know privacy agreements and whatnot, but what about the company that buys 23andMe? And it's a little messed up when you think about it. People are paranoid about registering their fingerprints into their phone, but hell yeah, I'll send you my DNA so you can tell me I'm not not related to Alexander the Great, where do I sign up? Mobile apps are tracking you, and the part that kind of pisses me off is that Gas Buddy is not specifically cited directly in the section, and so I'm not really sure how seriously I can take it. F***ing Gas Buddy. Deepfakes. Those are those AI-driven videos of people saying things that they never said, but AI can make it look like they said them, and that's why the world is terrible. This is like Photoshop for video, people, and why we're not all taking this more seriously is just mind-blowing, but oh, hey, Governor Tarkin looked great in Star Wars Rogue One, right? So why is everyone so weird about this? Okay, so there's a ton there. This is only a seven-minute podcast, and like I said, there's 82 pages worth of stuff, and I'll be reading every page of it, one column at a time, because apparently Mozilla hates us. And I encourage you to do the same. But for now, it is time for the Roundup! Little inside baseball. Every time I say Roundup, I point at the sky for no reason that I can think of. The geniuses of CNET have already gone and watched Avengers Endgame and written a review for it, but then they took it to the next level. They are providing a real service here, people. They lay out in great detail exactly when it's okay to get up and go to the bathroom during the movie without missing anything important. The last hour, purely verboten. But there are a few other times when you can go drain the lizard and not miss a beat, and I think I speak for all of us when I say CNET, you have our deepest thanks. Oh, and squee tomorrow! I'm okay. The OnePlus 7 Pro is coming, and you know how OnePlus likes to call itself the affordable flagship? Well, they fixed the affordable part. The OnePlus 7 Pro is slated to cost between $700 and $820, according to Android Central, and for those of you keeping score, $820 is more than the base level Samsung Galaxy S10e. So let's all ruminate on that for a bit. OnePlus, not a fan of what I'm seeing here, bud. Verizon CEO and Chairman Hans Vestberg said during an investor call that it will carry the Samsung Galaxy Note 5G variant, but whether or not the network will be working in Chicago by then remains to be seen. 
I don't think there's really anything all that surprising here. Samsung is already making a 5G variant of the Galaxy S10, and yes, I will be downtown to test that one out as well. And as soon as we have hands-on, we'll tell you all about it. Facebook looks to be slapped with a three to five billion with a B dollar fine by the FTC for its garbage privacy practices, and investors are cheering because it could have been so much worse. Facebook announced that it had already set aside three billion dollars that it had found in some couch cushions to help cover the cost of the expected fine. And how are you so bad at your jobs, FTC? Fines are supposed to incentivize changing behavior, not be absorbed as a cost of doing business. Make it hurt, FTC. You know, like how the two billion people who use Facebook get hurt every day because Facebook gives Satan evil lessons. Mario Kart Tour, a mobile phone version of the popular Nintendo game, is coming and I have already signed up for the closed beta group. Mario Kart is arguably my favorite game on the Switch, so bringing it to my phone would be disastrous for my productivity. But I promise you all, I won't play it until the podcast comes out every day, and that's probably not true, and I'm so sorry. And finally, what the holy f***? Amazon. You may recall last week when we reported that Amazon employees were casually monitoring voice clips to determine the quality of commands people were giving to their Echo devices. Well, today, we find out that some of those clips have location data attached to them, so not only can Amazon employees access our voice recordings, and I'm still not convinced that they only get sent through when the commander is spoken, but also Amazon employees can conceivably tie those voice recordings to an address and therefore to a specific person. Now, Amazon assures us that everything is fine and there are strict controls over who can access the data and why, but I honestly, I I'm not sure what to make of this. I mean, it's terrible, but frankly, now I want Bloomberg to go take a look at the Google Home people. Meanwhile, I'll be over here making my tinfoil hat and crying in the corner. So that's going to do it for today's Digit Daily. If you'd like to learn more about any of these stories, check out the links in the show notes and subscribe to our daily newsletter on Digit.com. And if you like what you heard, not you, Amazon, subscribe, leave a review, and don't forget to tell your friends about DigitDailyPod.com. Once again, I'm Adam Dowd, Dead Technology on Twitter, and we'll talk again tomorrow, and Amazon will probably be listening. <laughs>